<sighs> Someone kill me. You want to see the wonders of space and leave a pile of excrement on each earth like planet as a ritualistic territory marking? Well, worry not, my little friend. I'll do my best to introduce you to the most boring part of the game. Yeah, okay, maybe that was a bit uncalled for. Exploration, then. First things you must do is drop your pants and other garments. You won't need them. Oh, and make sure to install the latest and greatest bathroom. I mean, okay, a shit bucket under the pilot seat works, but not as well, you see. Okay, now that the main thing is done, see you in the black. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So here's the thing, just like with Bleach, there are different kinds to choose from. Planetary, Xeno exploration, tourism, etc. In most cases, you'll need just a few tools and things. First, for the standard explorer's build, STRIP THEIR PRIVATE! Yes, strip your ship of everything, and then equip D modules everywhere. Next, get the lightest thrusters and also equip 1D power distributor to further bring down the weight. And finally, equip A grade FSD. Now, as you travel far away, you'll need more fuel, so it's recommended to get the biggest fuel scoop you can. Consider this as the base build for Explorer's ship. Maximum jump range, minimum weight. Afterwards, you can add whatever you see fit. If you go for system and celestial body exploration, you must equip the Advanced Discovery Scanner, which also pairs up as a fantastic honk machine. With this thing, you'll discover every celestial object there is in the system. Now, in addition to that, if you need extra money from data, get a detailed surface scanner as well. Then, if you plan on traveling really far away, getting one or two module repair units would be a great idea. So you don't get stranded in the middle of nowhere after being dumb enough to ram stars or cook your ship to a crisp. As for SRV Bay, well, that one you should pick up whenever you need to gather materials for synthesis on a trip or you want to explore the planet. Other than that, you don't really need anything else. See, an elite you can explore in any ship, it just takes a lot longer to get from A to B in a crappier one. Oh, and fuel tanks, they can be substitute for fuel scoop, but I would not count on it at all. Plus, it's extra weight. Okay then, as you explore, there is one thing you must remember. You can't refuel at every star. As you open up the filter and select stars, in the list, the top seven stars allow you to refuel only. Or if that's too hard, just remember KGB foam. Those be the letters that are refuelable stars. If you're running low on the fuel, aim for these. But in some unlikely case that you actually run out of fuel, call up the fuel rats, they'll help you. Or better yet, if you're willing to spend the trip jumping more, but having fuelable stars on every jump, just check the apply to the filter checkbox. The next thing you must know is that neutron stars will boost your jump range by additional 300%. So for example, my jump Jumperconda can do 60 light year jump range, so. After scooping from Neutron Star, I will be able to do about 240 light year jump in one go. Now, Neutron scooping is a bit dangerous, but there are tutorials out there that will show you how to do it. Oh, and White Dwarf Stars will boost you by only 50%. Also, it's worth checking the Use Jet Cone Boost checkbox. So the route planner will take in count Neutron Boosts when doing the route planning. By not using this thing to get to Colony, it would take me about 400 jumps. But as I tick the box and the game replans my route, it drops down to about 300. A huge difference, if you ask me. Oh, and there's one more thing. Neutron stars are more frequently found above or below galaxy mid-plane, so take that in count as well. Okay, you're set and you know more things. Plus, the new bathroom is installed, just waiting to be desecrated. Good! As you go there to discover new stars and slap your name on them, remember, grab one of these images with you. These charts will show you which celestial objects are the most profitable and which ones are not, so you can scan or disregard them accordingly. So now that everything's in order, you can go out there and visit whatever there is to be visited. Make new friends with rocks, then show your pet rocks some other rocks, and simply just rock on, buddy. In the end, let me know what are the things that you still want to know about exploration in Elite Dangerous, and if I find it interesting or whatnot else, I might actually do a follow-up. Or at the very least, I'll let you know where to find your answers.